Well, good morning. It's May 3rd, 2023. Uh, I think it's been about three months since I've built this greenhouse, so I figured I'd do a little review on it. Not just on the functioning of the greenhouse, but the, the plants itself. Anyway, uh, for those who haven't watched, this is a uh, swimming pool that we converted into a greenhouse. Um, first, I guess the first problem is uh, as the temperature started hitting 80 degrees in full sun, we were getting spikes, spikes of like 117 degrees Fahrenheit in here. And I was relying on that fan down there, which is undersized for this. Um, I think reading greenhouse instructions, you want the airflow to move completely exchanged three times a minute. And with this fan, when I did the calculations, it's, it's doing it every three minutes so this is like nine times undersized fan as far as air movement anyway uh i was real i was using that and then the door had just this little bit of screen opening to let air in and during the day we would open the door which is this right here and we that in itself was not doing it at all so we did i did two different things one is this right here, that's just a hose-in sprayer that has a mister setting. Now I'm on well water and I can't use a regular mister. Um, you know, the little copper brass mister little fittings, they'll clog up within about 10 minutes and I can't use them. So this has a finer or a, a little bit bigger water droplet, but it's still what I consider a fine mist. And I did that and I started doing it during the spikes, um, I, I noticed with my temperature thing that, you know, the one to three o'clock in the afternoon range was when I was getting the temperature spike. So I've got this on a timer to come on at one o'clock, turn off at three o'clock. And then, let me step down here. And then this section right here, I went ahead and pulled off the polycarbonate panel and put a, uh, eighth inch hardware cloth on. I didn't do screen wire because uh, I wanted to give something a little bit more durable so animals couldn't get in here. So anyway, I had something interesting happening happen. The day, the day I took this polycarbonate panel, I came inside and it was uh, 102 degrees in here. And I was actually filming and the camera got too hot and quit recording. But anyway, so at one o'clock, it was 102 degrees in here. And at one o'clock, this kicked on and I had just taken this panel off, so I guess you got this big gush of hot air that could leave. And it went down from 102 degrees down to one temperature showed 94 degrees, the other one showed 95 degrees, so that was pretty significant. Now this was only on a like an 80 degree day. But anyway, so uh, between the two it has helped a lot. Um, I am going to go back and replace this poly, this polycarbonate panel with screen wire also. And this is one of those deals that in winter time I just covered up. Anyway, so that's pretty much covered in the functioning of it. Um, you know, because it's a swimming pool, I had to build decks on it to keep, you know, flat surfaces so I could keep pots in here. I mean, there's just no way I could use dirt in this greenhouse. Anyway, so I've got this hole here, so all the all the water that the mist system, the water that comes out of the pots, it actually goes into the bottom of the swimming pool, and I've got a sump pump here, and I pump it out, which is fine. It's been working fine. Uh, it actually gives you an area to water stuff outside. I could even make a little rain garden outside if I wanted to and just concentrate this water into there. Anyway, so all in all, it's I think it's doing good. Um, still got to do some tweaking. But I wanted to cover some observations on plants. And, uh, you know, some of these are known, some of these are unknown. But take, uh, take tomatoes as an example, which is this right here. I knew it would be a fail. Um, you know, the reason here in Texas, we, we're putting tramp, transplants out as soon as we can in the springtime. And the reason we do that is because we got to get a tomato crop before, or we got to get fruit on the plant before the temperatures start hitting 90 because at that point they'll flower but they won't set fruit. So I did this and I've got some tomatoes outside and this is kind of a test case. You can, 
I mean, it's, it's May 3rd and there's not a single tomato on it. I mean, not a single one and it has flowered. But let's go take a look outside so we can compare. And that's what I want to do today is do some little comparisons. Okay, where well, these are tomatoes I started, I mean, all of these I, I started by seed, but they were in the greenhouse and then I moved them out as soon as the outside temperatures were good. But as you can see, they're bushier, they're shorter. Uh, they just look healthier. And you can see I've got, with this one right here, this is a beef master. This one's starting to turn red. And I'm gonna look over here and I did I did have another observation um, which is both on these tomatoes out here and the ones inside um, it, really anything in a five gallon pot on the inside I couldn't keep enough water on them you know my my ritual is to like down here and in the greenhouse I've got a water hose and it's gravity fed um, I've got this stainless steel tank which is fed by this tank here so rain comes off the roof fills this tank up and then i use a little 110 volt pump and i just pump it into here and from here it's gravity fed anyway the so i'd, I'd go in and like okay i would just do a slow count to 10 you know put the hose here slow count to 10 put it here count to 10 and might make my way outside and inside the greenhouse probably three days ago after I did it I went and picked up one of these plants and I'm like and you know if you got a house plant you can pick it up and tell if it needs watering by the weight of it anyway I started picking them up and I'm like these things don't have any weight to them so I ended up putting you know a planter tray underneath these plants and then the next day I picked them up and it was like so much heavier so this is just a three-day thing I just did these right here but you can but the main thing is you can tell the difference i mean how much bigger they are i'm not i'm not sure what's going on with this one here um there's some romas you can see there's plenty of roma tomatoes on it i'm planning on making ketchup this year anyway so i use these trays they're working good and, I, and i'm gonna have to do that in the greenhouse also anyway let's stay uh let's see if i can stay on task here uh since i'm out here we'll look at uh we'll look at potatoes kind of the same thing I got some in the ground some in containers and some in the greenhouse so this is my potato crop and you probably look at it and think okay it's not it's not doing great but we're 90 days in on this potato crop so we're we're getting to the end of it harvest time um, I want to show you in the greenhouse itself and I was a little shocked on this kind of like the tomatoes this uh, this one right here I left as a control and the ultimate is the is going to be to harvest it but you you know you can initially tell that okay the tomato the potato I'm, I'm not sure if i said tomato earlier the potato is uh it's not looking good but like i said keep in mind this is 90 days or more i had actually started this is the first bucket of uh, potatoes i had started anyway the, the ultimate is going to be to it stayed its whole time in this greenhouse so it hit that speak the, those peaks of 117 degrees 110 degrees 102 degrees uh, we're going to see when I harvest it how it did. But I do want to walk over to my in-ground potatoes. I'll be right there. So we'll do a three-way comparison. Okay, so this is my potato patch. And first observation is, oh my gosh, this looks so much better. And it is a good crop. And I will say this is the best potato crop I've had in the ground. I'll explain what's happened over the years. So the first, the first two years I planted potatoes around this time we end up with a big big rain event i'm talking about 12 inches of rain in a week and i've got all these hills back here so the, the water's traveling down and down here and, and it ends up ends up with just a soppy garden for like six weeks you can't get in because it's so muddy and you know the deal that's going to rot your potatoes in the ground so i had two years of that so I brainstorm and like okay let's do raised beds so as you can see here we've got what I did with raised beds there are two by eights uh, out of cedar anyway as soon as I went to raised bed I guess it's an El Nino thing I don't know if y'all know that about the water patterns or the rain patterns but we went from 
too much rain to not enough rain but along with the not enough rain uh, late freezes which always hits us so i plant all my potatoes based on what texas a&m says is my time frame which i think is in the february thing february time frame but we were getting this late freeze at easter or just before easter which is late april so all the ones that have sprouted they die now they do you know some more eyes do do uh, uh sprout after that but anyway so i went from too much water and dying to late freezes really impacting my harvest and then super drought conditions no rain at all where uh you know it's so hard to keep them watered anyway so this is the first year i've got a good crop i think these are going to outperform um, like I said, I'm not saying the ones I have over in the other area are bad because they are 90 days where this is more like a, just over 30 days. You know, so in another month, these are going to start getting the heat stress like like what's happening in the greenhouse. Anyway, we'll, uh, let's get back to the greenhouse. Okay, well, well I'm actually in my house to show a, a coffee plant. So I, I received two coffee plants. They were the same size. I just want to show these a comparison. This is the one in my house. It's not doing real great. I mean, it's it's okay. It's living. But let me show you what's uh, the one in my greenhouse, what it looks like. Okay, well, this is the coffee plant in the greenhouse. And I think you can tell a big, significant difference. Um, real happy about that. So I'll probably move the, uh, the one that's inside the house um, out here. So anyway, that's another comparison. Looking at sweet potatoes. Um... I've actually got my outside ones at, at a different location, but you know we're probably we've got probably got vines of the sweet potato running out six feet or so. And when I look at the sweet potatoes I've got planted, same deal, same potting soil, same muck, muck bucket sitting outside. Uh, they're maybe the vines are maybe 12 inches long. And the all right, well I came out to where I planted my sweet potatoes outside in a muck bucket, but. There we go, big difference between the greenhouse and in the ground. And these were pretty much planted at the right time to plant them. So I got a super, super duper, super duper head start in the greenhouse. The difference is probably 30 days of, you know, I, I could do this one as soon as I got the slips. I, I produced the slips myself. But uh, I was able to put these out a month sooner. So, so, you know, naturally we got a month more growth. And I have no doubt the ones I have outside will look like this in another month. So, uh, this is one of the knowns I knew I could grow this start to finish inside the greenhouse. And then let's, uh, let's move the grape plant. So the grape plant, these were all planted this year. I mean, they, they had, you know, they had the woody structure on it, had to send out a new, new shoot from it. I mean, this is all growth this year, you know, in, in, in inside of 90 days. I'm gonna show you my biggest one over here. I mean, that, that ridge right here is, is taller than me. I'd say it's eight feet, well, seven and a half feet or so, and it's probably another 18 inches above that. So that's pretty impressive. Now, I do like the idea of a green wall, and I've got, I don't know, I think four, four great plants in here. I mean, I like the idea of, of covering this up, and so far it looks like it's going to work. But another reason I wanted grapes is to be nursery stock for my terrace system which i've got 300 feet of eight foot tall fences that are teed at the top to to kind of do an arbor anyway so what i did the second the second vine coming out i, I just stuck it in some dirt and hoping it's going to root so i'm trying to do that on all my great plants so this will be nursery stock also did some cuttings and uh stuck them in dirt and so far i haven't done a bunch of it but one batch failed completely. The other batch looks like I got a hundred percent, but it's only two of them. So anyway, the grapes are doing well, and that's uh, wasn't really sure that that wasn't unknown. Then let's talk about cucumbers real quick. And these are cucumbers in the ground, so they're just now sprouting, but yet in the greenhouse, I'm I've already harvested six of them and probably be getting six of them a day uh, from here on out. So another super head start in the greenhouse, cucumbers. Um, so this, this is affecting what I was talking about with the tomatoes. I don't think I'm getting enough water. I mean, if you look at the, if you look at the mantle leafy area, 
compared to that five gallon bucket of soil, you can see there's a lot of moisture coming out of it compared to let's say this right here. You know, if that was in a five gallon bucket, this is in a five gallon bucket, you know this is gonna take more water than that. So I'm having a, I've been having a hard time keeping this thing watered. I mean, I'll come out at noontime and it looks like, I mean, I just, I was like, oh my gosh, I walked in one day and I'm like, man, these things were drooping so bad. I'm like, there's no way these things are gonna die. Anyway, so I sprinkled, sprinkled the leaves, put water in it, and probably an hour later they, they rebounded. Um, there is some, I'm not sure what this is, but I got a suspicion that these, uh, how the leaves are discolored. I don't know if that's a bug pressure or if that's my mist system, which is well water, which is very alkaline, but I, I guess we do have some bugs. You can see that there. But taken away from that, the harvest, I mean, it's doing good. I mean, look, look at this. These are like those straight cucumbers, I guess English cucumbers you get at the grocery store. Um, we picked our first one yesterday, had a salad last night, but we're gonna get a real good harvest. My one regret is not staggering. Um, you know, when I watch people, they say just fungus gets to these things so quick, it's better to just stagger. So I should have planted these two weeks later, planted these two weeks later, you know, on and on to stagger the harvest. So with these, which are eating cucumbers, I'm gonna get one big harvest, which is, you know, not, not a, I don't know if a real good way to preserve them, we'll have to look into it. But anyway, so I'm probably gonna end up with making, let's use this example. If I just make a two before box, you know, with the two before sitting upright, make a box and then put a pond liner in there and I'll make this giant tray that'll handle all of the cucumbers, which will make this a fixed spot uh, every year to, to uh, plant the, the cucumbers. Anyway, these are Katrinas. They get five and a half to six and a half inch long. They're the ones that only produce female flowers. So every flower produces a fruit, which is a real big harvest. And because there's no pollen, the uh, cucumbers don't have any seed. But uh, these particular ones came from Johnny's seeds. This is a uh, cantaloupe. I mean, let me go back to the other side. I do the same thing. This one, this one I'm like, okay that I mass planted them all at one time because these are pickling cucumbers. So when you're pickling, you, you need a lot of them at one time. And this is a quirk from Johnny Seeds. And it showed them being green or white, but you can see the, the cucumber there. And I'm, I gotta go back and look and see what the length is when you start harvesting. But I am real excited about true fermented pickles like when I was a kid versus the, the canned ones. Anyway, same way, so so these seem to droop a lot more. The, the Katrina's drooped more than the quirks. Both of these are high heat greenhouse type cucumber plants, which is why I bought them. On the, uh, if you're interested in growing them on the quirks, the instruction said, put it on netting and just let it go. Let it go, vine and, and whatever. On the uh, Katrina's, it said, run them on a single string straight up, I guess keeping the runners at bay, whatever, just let them go, grow straight up. So just a little thing on the cucumbers. And then this last one here is a honeydew. Um, anyway, so the, the drooping has been disappointing, but I think I know why and I'm gonna be able to fix it. So the banana plant is just out of control. I mean, every few days I'm getting a new leaf and the new leaves are better than the original leaves. I've talked about this in the past, but the first couple leaves that came out had brown edges on it and I contributed to the, the well water I was having to use. And then by this, you know, the first leaf had a lot of browning, the second leaf had a little browning, and the third leaf was coming out just beautiful. Let me show this leaf right here. I mean, look at that, it's just a beautiful leaf. And I've, I've honestly lost count. I've been, these brown leaf ones, I've been cutting them off, so I've lost count, but I'm sure I'm on my fifth leaf or so. But this thing is loving it in here. And I've got, I mean, I've got three babies, one that I, that I pulled already. So I don't know if you know this about bananas, but you get one harvest, then the plant dies. But it doesn't really die because it sends up a new one from the root. So, uh, I mean, technically I can leave one here to replace this one and pull the other two out and replant them and, and increase increase the supply. Um, the 
cedar green wall pretty much has been a fail just does not hold enough moisture uh, enough volume of dirt these beets wilt down to nothing the, the turnips i just pulled them the broccoli cauliflower i just pulled them i mean the only thing i'm well i did get a, a radish harvest but that was earlier in the season i mean the tomatoes are in here and they are doing good and I'm trying to figure out how i got this i got a potato plant in here with it i'm gonna have to snip that off but all in all, the, the strawberries are doing good in this thing, and I just gotta make sure every time I'm in here, I, I water it. Um, Chody, choke this right here. It was in the, uh, it was in the rainfall of my mist system, and I don't know if this is what caused it or somebody knows what this is, but I don't know if that's some kind of disease or mineral kind of thing. I'm gonna have to do some research on it. But I've, uh, both of these were doing great. I had, I had stuck the chody in, in some dirt. I'd stuck two of them in there. Both of them sprouted, but I had to transplant them. I planted one in here to leave in here, and then I planted one in, in the terrace as a control. Both are doing about equal. Both of them suffered severe transplant shock. I mean, this thing was going nuts until I transplanted it, and then it just, it just took this fall back on me. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so I talked about the tomatoes, how this one's just look like a Charlie Brown tomato plant. Um, the peppers. All right, this is my jalapeno pepper that's growing outside in a muck bucket. There again, big difference. Got the early head start in the uh, greenhouse. Other than, I wanna say they're a little tall and scraggly. They are producing like crazy. I mean, you can see all the jalapeno plants here. Uh, fruit and then if you look here these are banana peppers the only bad thing is this was supposed to be a black purple bell pepper i planted it from seed and it's not that's a little disappointing but the the bell pepper is on there and that's a red bell pepper now probably a month later i planted this one uh, this is an orange bell pepper and it's not as long and scraggly and it's got a fruit on it so i wonder if the scraggliness was just the lower sunlight days I, I had you know because these were brought out here in probably february march anyway days are longer now so the the orange bell pepper um you know it, it got put out here during the longer days so i don't know if that's the reason but i mean even looking at it it's it's fine i mean it's you know i don't i don't with a harvest like that i don't think anybody would be disappointed in it so the citrus trees and cinnamon tree and fig tree let's just take a quick look through it the fig tree has figs in it which is pretty cool um i am making sure i leave it as a single trunk so i come back and break this stuff off the rest of the citrus trees we just pretty much just need a good year on it they they've been through a tough time the ones i've the ones i had were sitting outside and nothing but manure as the soil which was not a good thing Anyway, there were a lot of weird things were happening, so I just sucked it up and repotted everything. And I'm starting to see these, like the the new leaves look, pretty much look good. And then the older leaves are just, they got this yellowing thing, like there's a nitrous deficiency. But some of them are looking good, some of them are looking bad. I'm just, you know, they've been through so much shock this year that I'm just letting it, I don't have a lot of expectations for the plants. Now the ones I bought this year, I mean, there's no sign of deficiency at all. I mean, when I bought them, they were on rainwater and, and they were probably fertilized a lot from the, from the factory, but you can see the ones I bought this year. So I just got to get the old ones at this level. Um, I still may have a little issue with uh, spider mites. I'm seeing, I'm seeing where I've got some missing leaves. So I have to do another treatment on that. This is a uh, avocado, which uh, when I was carrying it, when I was carrying it down to this bottom of the greenhouse, I had it out of the pot and I tripped and fell. It took a pretty hard fall, but when I was done, this, this plant didn't have any dirt in it left at all. It was just root. And I did replant it and I thought it wasn't going to come back, but it took about a month, but it relieved. The uh, Mission Olive is doing good. 
um, all in all, I think I'm okay here. Like I said, I just got to get past the initial shock. Anyway, I think, uh, well, let's look at peanuts. Peanut plant, a lot smaller than what I have in the greenhouse. There again, earlier start, bigger plant. Peanuts are way ahead of what I have outside. I'm not going to walk out there, but it's just a, got 30 days of in here versus having to wait to plant them outside. All right, so anyway, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, I still got more heat coming, so I'm gonna have to make some more adaptions, and we'll we'll see how it works. But I'll uh, I'll show you another update in about another month. But all in all, I'm I'm super happy with this thing, and uh, you guys have a great day.